In this video, I'll be working through the question you see on the screen from paper 3.2 from 2024 of the Cambridge A-Level exam. If you're looking for a different question from this paper, check out the description below for a link to a playlist. And if you're looking for a different paper entirely, have a look around on my channel. I'll be doing all this on a whiteboard, hopefully just like you're used to your teacher doing. But remember, we're not in a classroom, we're on YouTube. So take advantage of that. Use the pause, uh, rewind and fast forward uh, buttons. Um, if you find this video or any of my videos useful, I would greatly appreciate liking, subscribing or even sharing. In part A, they give us y is equal to secant cubed theta and they want us to find this. They show us the answer, they want us to find this. The reason they do that is because we're going to use this in part B. Uh, part B is already long enough. Um, so they want to make sure we have this. Still, how do we find this? They remind us that secant cubed or secant in general is one over cosine. Uh, so cu secant cubed is uh, one over cosine cubed. So how do we get from that to this? Basically, we want to differentiate this. So let's write it out again. Y is equal one over cosine cubed theta. The derivative, we're going to have to use the, the a chain rule here. So the derivative of one over x cubed, that's easy to do, or x to the power of three, because I can rewrite this as a cosine theta to the power of a minus three, I should have said. Um, so to get the derivative of the something to the power of minus three, that's easy. Um, so we just pretend this is easy. We pretend this is just simple as an x. Uh, x to the power of minus three would become uh, minus three something the x uh, to the power of minus four. And I'll just put in cosine theta for this, but we're not quite allowed to do that. We're not allowed to um, pretend this is just x every time unless we fix that. And that's really what the chain rule is. Um, we have, uh, we've pretended that this was simply x. To fix that, we end up differentiating this and multiplying it. So the derivative of cosine theta is, um, minus sign, I just, I have to visualize the, the slopes cosines like this, so the derivative of that is zero, which is sine, but it goes down, so it's actually minus sine. That's, that's how I remember it. So the derivative of this is minus uh, sine theta, and we multiply that by that. Uh, putting this all together, we get the answer we're looking for. We get minus by a minus is a plus, a three, put the sine out front, sine theta, and then cosine, and then one over cosine to the power of four is the same as secant uh, to the power of four. And that's the answer part A. It wasn't that difficult part A, they're just making sure we have this to do part B, which is a lot more difficult. Okay, on to the dreaded part uh, B. It's a pretty long and pretty hard question. There's eight marks for it, so you're getting quite a big reward for this. And I will say, this question doesn't take that long to do if, if you know what you're doing. So why are you getting these eight marks? Uh, first of all, it's difficult. But second of all, there, in any integration question, especially a really difficult one like this, there's a lot of wrong paths to take. And um, we're gonna see that in this question. I'll try and, I'll show us part of the way down each path, uh, just so you get a glimpse for where you can go wrong. Um, and that's what's gonna take you a lot of time in your exam. You're gonna try this, fail. Try this and fail until you find that correct path. Also, this question, I need two or three boards. So it's gonna get a bit messy. I apologize. I'll try and keep it as neat as I can. Right, we start off with this. Uh, they tell us it's a differential equation. Solve a differential equation. So even if you don't recognize it, that should be a clue. Um, simple differential equations, this is. How we solve it is we rearrange it so all the thetas are with d theta on the left. So all the x's are with dx. So we'll move dx up on the right. So that's what we're rearranging it and we're gonna integrate both sides. That's how I know it's an integration question there already. Um, so let's just rearrange it, all the thetas. I'll bring this cosine to the power of four over to the left and we'll end up, I'll just try and get as far left as I can. And we'll end up with sine theta multiplied by one over cosine to the power of four theta d theta is equal to all the x's. x plus three stays where it is, and we'll divide by this one, x squared plus nine uh, dx. 
So that's what we have uh, now. Um, and again, how we solve a, a normal, a simple differential equation is integrate both sides. Just integrate both sides like that. And that's basically it. We just now have to do this work. And it's difficult work. We have a, a difficult integral here. You have to solve it using a substitution, except there's a, a little trick from part A, which I've left that up here for this reason. Uh, the right-hand side, that's the real meat of this question. It's quite difficult. We'll, we're going to end up splitting it into two parts, and we're going to run out of room, but we'll, we'll do our best. Um, first of all, the left side. Okay, so the integral of this, and this looks very similar to this. If I move this tree over here, this is the same as this from the first one. That's why they made sure we knew this. Um, I've also changed uh, the secant of R4 to one over cosine. Just, honestly, I, I don't like using secants ever. I'll always use the one over cosine or one over sine. Okay, so if I was to here take the integral of both these sides, the integral of this is easy. The, well, the one over three can come outside. Yeah, let's just put a line through it. Um, the integral of dy, dy d theta is just y. Um, this is with respect to dy, of course, d theta, I mean. The integral of this is just y. And the integral of the right side is what we're looking for. So really, this just becomes 1 over 3 y um, equals still the same here. The problem is there's no y in this question. Where did, where did y come from? It's from part a. So we can't really leave y. We need to leave uh, 1 over 3 times 1 over cosine uh, cubed theta. Um, sorry, keep that under. And that still equals all this. And that's what we're going to try to solve now. Um, yeah, let me write it in again. Uh, x plus 3 over x squared plus 9. Dx. So like I said, this is the main part of this question. This is what we really need, want to get our hands on. And uh, how do you go about solving this? I, uh, to my students, I uh, suggest uh, a few things to think about. The first thing I suggest, I'm going to skip for now because it happens to work. Um, and I want to show you some of the other paths you could have taken to go wrong. I'll even write some of them down because we're going to use them anyway. When I look at a question like this, uh, sorry, the first path was, is algebra, moving things around. But I'll skip over that for a moment. Uh, some things I think of is substitution. And um, the idea would be to substitute the most complicated part of this and hopefully it cancels the other part. So um, substitute in the bottom row. I'll write it down because, like I said, we'll end up using it. Um, I'll, I'll leave it all out of the way though. Uh, u is equal x squared plus 9. If I substitute the bottom row, that'll be useful. Or maybe it would be. And when we substitute, we end up, uh, we differentiate, because we want to replace the dx. So we differentiate to find dx as 2x there, rearrange it, and we get dx is equal 1 over 2x uh, multiplied by uh, du. No. Yeah, du. That's why when I say we substitute or use the chain rule, we end up differentiating things and dividing in integration. That's where the dividing comes from. So this could be a wrong path you take here. You could try this substitution. But think of what would happen. The bottom row would become u. That's OK. And the dx, an x would appear here. And you might think, oh, I'll cancel the x. I'm, I'm on the right path. Problem, it doesn't, it still divides into the 3. So you're still left with 3 over 2x. And now you'll only have a du here, so can't integrate that. So it looks good, and it looks good because it will be good in a moment, um, but it's not the right path. Another thing you might think, which again I'll write down, uh, this looks very familiar. If you look at your formula, you should find an integral of 1 over x squared plus a squared is equal to, um, let me just look at the note I have there, uh, 1 over a multiplied by the inverse tan of x over a. So this looks tempting. We have uh, the bottom row is x squared plus 3 squared. So this looks like something we could use. And um, the problem is the top row. It's not 1. So again, you could try move that uh, like it multiplies away. So maybe you start thinking of um, substitution by parts, two things multiplying. 
that'd be that'd be a really bad path to go down. They'd never they'd never combine uh, substitution by parts, by the way, with a simple differential equation. It would make it too difficult again. But still, you might think it, you might try it. It'll only take you an extra few minutes, but you'll find out it doesn't work. It it sends you down the wrong path. So okay, we're we're now with things. We go back to the first thing you should have thought of is just rearranging it. Hope, just making it look different and turn it into, in this case, two things that you can um, you can integrate. And you should play around with it. Like, for example, the first thing I would try is, it's something that won't work. Uh, remember, this is the answer for the left. We'll come back to this. I'll just use the right for now. Um, the first thing I'd like to try would be, uh, does the top cancel into the bottom? Like, is the, can the bottom be factorized? x plus 3 and something x minus 3 oh it's so close because if that was a minus it would be easy but but no that's that's not what we do here but there's other possibilities we can separate the top row x goes into this 3 goes into this we can separate them top rows are easy to move apart like that so this could become the integral of uh well let's take the integral of both of them even the integral of x over x squared plus 9 dx and the tree could be just separate and added on like these can be recombined if you want if you're if if it's the wrong path it, it is the right path by the way uh, x squared plus nine so that would be this would be one of the first paths i would have taken uh, try and separate that and now it turns out because of what i've already talked about this can be solved using substitution just like i discussed we'd end up with uh, a 2x on the bottom row here and that 2x will cancel this x this guy can be solved with substitution this one here again it's quite difficult but if we cancel the tree out with sorry yeah uh, just move the tree out up front not cancel it or anything and uh, move the tree out front leave a one here and uh, this is just like one of our formula so we can do both of these and uh, let's let's do one row down here and then I should fit most of the answer and then we'll clean the board and, and get, the, get the next three marks or so that's in this question. But this is the, the meat of the question, this here. Okay, so how do we do the substitution? I guess I'll need a couple of rows for that. Uh, actually, do you know what we do? Let's do, the, let's do the substitution here and so on. Let's just take this one little part separately here so we have a bit of room. x over x squared plus a dx and we'll come back this can be done in one row because it's already the answer this answer and we'll have our final answer down here oh i'm missing one thing from earlier hopefully people are shouting at the screen uh, i integrated already so a constant should have appeared i'll call it constant one because i'll have loads of these constants i can combine them together later that's why i've ignored them um so how do we do this uh, substitution this will equal a substitution i've already done over here this will equal x on the top Bottom row will become u. dx will turn into 1 over 2x uh, du. The x's cancel. And the 2 comes out front uh, to be a half. Um, so we're left with just the integral of 1 over u du. Sorry, the, not the x. Um, sorry, the 2 came out. I've, yeah, I moved the 2 out. Uh, so the integral of 1 over u. Again, go to our formula. Uh, we know how to do that. The integral of 1 over something just comes out as, uh, not the half, the half's on its own, uh, it comes out as natural log of the something, or natural log of u in this case, uh, plus some constant, c2. Uh, u, there's no u's in our question, we made up u, we better fix it, we better rewrite this as a half natural log of x squared plus 9, uh, plus c2. Oh, uh, often you also see the absolute value of u. We don't actually have to worry about that here because x squared is, is a positive. 9 is a positive, so we know this is positive, so don't need to worry about it. Sometimes you do, so be a little careful. Anyway, for now, that's, that's the answer to this part. So let me, let me write all the answers actually down. The first part was 1 over 3, 1 over cosine uh, cubed theta, and plus some constant, c1 equals the second part is a half natural log x squared plus 9 uh, plus some constant c2 and this last part here uh, that's a tree 
the integral of this, I'm just following this rule here. Remember, 9 is 3 squared. So this becomes 1 over 3. 3 is cancelled, that's nice. Um, inverse tan. Um, inverse tan of x over 3. And that's plus some other constant, C3. But uh, that, a constant plus a constant, that's just a constant. A constant plus a constant minus another constant. That's just a constant, so if we can get rid of all these, just once we leave one of them, uh, I'll call it just C for now. Okay, so that's, um, that's a lot of your marks. I'll, I'll have to clean the rest of the board to do a bit more, but uh, that's a lot of your marks. They, they also tell us that when x is 3, sorry, x is 3 when theta is pi over 3, and knowing those two numbers, it doesn't matter when, like the constant as its name suggests is constant, it doesn't change. So if we know these numbers at some point, we put them in and we'll find out what C is. That's what I'll do next. And then they still go on to ask, what is cosine theta uh, when x is zero? So that's, so we're still more marks to make here. Uh, let me clean, I think, pretty much everything. I don't think I need anything except this equation. I'll leave it down the bottom to save me a, uh, Writing again, and uh, then we'll find C. Okay, after a lot of integration, we've got this equation here. We still need to know C. Sometimes the question ends at this point after we find C at least. So let's find C. They tell us that x is equal to 3 when theta equals pi over 3. So we just fill all these in, and the only number that'll be left will be C. So um, cosine of pi over 3 is a, let me write all this out here again. This is a third, um, that's a one over, if we put co, cosine pi over three and we get a half, so it's a half cubed. That's, um, that'll turn into an eight, I guess, eight over this three. And this will equal, let's see, a half, natural log of three squared, uh, which is nine, nine plus nine, natural log of 18. Um, let's see if we put in a tree here uh, the inverse tangent of one a uh, tree over three is one and that will come out as pi over four trees cancel so we're left with uh, pi over uh, four and then finally we have C nothing can be really cleaned up too much we just rearrange this so we get uh, C is equal Let's see, this will become an 8 over 1, uh, so that'll become 8 over 3. And this will be a minus, minus 1 over 2, natural log 18. And this will become a minus, minus pi over 4. Now, uh, looking at my own notes there quickly, I actually have 3 times this, 3 times this, 3 times this. That's because I multiplied everything by 3 down here, and instead of this C, I have three C, but it's this, what I'm trying to say is you can get different C's at this point. Like, remember I had constant one, two, and three. Um, I've added them all together here, but you could also have multiplied it by three. So I guess, um, yeah, you could end up with different constants. I'm just thinking they'd always have to be, I guess, just this. The, the ones you'd really get is either this or this multiplied by three. So multiply all these by three. If, if that's what you have, you're probably still okay. Um, it'll all come good in the end. We can get, get different constants on the way through though. Okay, now that I've got the constant, let me write this whole equation out again. Uh, let's do it here and I'll give us lots of room to work with. Um, so this equation becomes one over three, one over, fast forward this bit, I think, because it'll just take me a lot of writing. A half natural log x squared plus nine plus, let's clean this up, that becomes a inverse tangent of x over three plus c, but c now is eight over three minus one over two natural log 18, I'm running out of room there, uh, minus pi over four. Again, this is why uh, if you got, if you got a multiple of three of this, well, I'm about to multiply by three now, so that's that's why um, you would have got that. Okay, so this is the equation. They never really asked you for the equation at the end, but this is the differential equation as solved. You now, if, if you give me an x, I can give you a theta. 
If you give me a Tita, well, I'll have a bit of trouble, but I can in theory find you an X. And that's, that is what they do. They, they t give you an X, they tell you X is equal to zero, and they want cosine Tita. So we can put X is zero in here and find um, one over three cosine cubed Tita. Then we just uh, multiply by three and get the uh, cube root, um, the inverse cube root, in fact. So it can be done. Let's just do it here. It's, it's going to take a while. Uh, let's see. While I'm doing it, I'll multiply everything by three. So I get one over cosine cubed. I probably should have multiplied by three here and, and, and got it done with. Um, so this will equal, this multiplied by three is three over two. Natural log, remember x is now zero, so natural log of nine. Um, this multiplied by three won't matter because once I, the inverse tangent of zero is zero, so that's gone. Um, eight over three multiplied by three is eight. Um, minus this multiplied by three is three over two, natural log 18, minus uh, three over four pi. Okay. Um, at this point, you can rearrange it to get uh, cosine theta equals. But honestly, I'd suggest just putting this in a calculator at this point and then rearranging it. Um, I've done that here. Um, so I would get 1 over cosine cubed theta is equal. And I'd leave this on my calculator because I want the exact number, 4.604 4. Um, 4 and so on. It goes on for ages there. Then I would... Uh, Inverse this, I'd get uh, move the cosine cubed over here. Cosine uh, cubed theta is equal. Move that over there. One over this number. Remember, it's all still in your calculator. This number, and then I'd get the cube root of both sides. Side theta is equal one over and this guy to the power of one over three. And I put that in the calculator. I have my answer. This is already in my calculator, so I'd have a one divided by the answer to the power of uh, one divided by three. And I get 0 0.601 and yeah, three significant figures, 0 0.601. That's the final answer. Lots of points to get wrong with the integration earlier. And honestly, lots of points where you can make mistakes here. I, it took me two goes to do this when I checked the answer. So if I had been in the exam, I would have lost the mark here. Um, I don't know where I made the mistake because I had all my numbers right. Um, it's just something right here at the end, I made a mistake. So just be very careful, put in all your numbers, double check, triple check. Uh, one, one bit of advice is to get your answer and put it put it back in and put zero in, back in over here, see if it matches up. Test it, depending on how much time you have. Anyway, I hope this helped in some way. <laughs> it's it's a hard one to teach because it's so long, uh, especially with such a small board. Uh, but if you have any follow-up questions, something I did wrong or some question you just have, uh, let me know in the comments. I'll do my best to answer. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.